All right, I'm going to explain how to do the critical connections in a network problem on leak code. So I have an undirected graph here. And first of all, what is a critical connection? So a critical connection is just any edge if I were to remove it will prevent some nodes from reaching each other. So for example, if I, rem if I were to remove this edge here, these nodes can no longer reach each other. These nodes can't reach this node and vice versa. Therefore, that is a critical edge. Let me put it back. And this edge here, if I were to remove it, the same thing happens. So these nodes can't reach these nodes, and these nodes can't reach these nodes. Therefore, that is a critical connection. So let's put this back. And this edge here, if I were to remove it, uh, now prevents these nodes from reaching these nodes. Therefore, that is also a critical connection. So let me put that back. Now, notice that these three edges that I removed, so one, two, three, uh, these edges were not in the cycles of the graph. So there's two cycles here. There's one here, and there's one here. So these edges weren't in the cycles. Now, why is that important? Because if you're in a cycle, if you pick any node in a cycle, there's at least two ways to get to all the other nodes in the cycle. So for example, let's, let's say these two nodes here. These nodes are in a cycle, right? So these two here. Well, if I were to remove, say, this edge, there's still an alternate path to get there because I'm in a cycle. So uh, therefore, this edge is not a critical connection. So all we want to do is we want to find the edges that are not in cycles. So what we're going to do to find these is we're going to keep track of the depth. So we're going to kind of treat this like a tree, and we're going to keep track of the depth that we are currently at. And then we're going to return the minimum depth that we can reach. Uh, when we're traversing this graph. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna do a DFS or a depth first search. Let's just pick this node here. And you could picture this like the root of a tree. This would get a depth of zero. Depth of zero, okay. Now, oh my, oh whatever. Okay, so this gets a depth of zero and then we're gonna go to our neighbors or our children, whatever. This is gonna get a depth of one. And we're just gonna keep incrementing this depth, right? As we encounter unvisited nodes. So 0, 1, this gets a 2. Uh, let's say we go in this direction here. So we have two choices, either this node or this node, from the, if we're DFSing, right? Let's just say we pick this node. We're going to increase our depth again. This is a 3. Now, notice that we ran into a visited node. Why do I know it's visited? Because it has a depth. If it doesn't have a depth yet, then we haven't visited it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the minimum depth from this node here. So right now the minimum depth is just zero because that's the depth that it's holding. And that's the only, just, let's just keep going. So we're gonna take the zero here and we're going to do the minimum. We're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pass back this depth that we encountered, so the zero, we're gonna pass it back through the DFS recursion. Like, so if you imagine our DFS is like recursive calls, like DFS, 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 we're just gonna pass it back through the recursive calls. Okay, so. We're going to take the zero and we're going to do the minimum of zero and three. And we're going to pass back whatever. So the, the minimum of zero and three is zero. We're going to pass back the zero to this two. And now what does this tell us here? If we were able to find a depth or if we're able to reach a depth that is less than or equal to my own depth, then that means that that edge is in a cycle because, for example, if if we weren't in a cycle, let's say we started at zero, then one, this depth would just keep increasing. But as soon as we have a cycle or we have a back edge to some node in the graph, then we're going to run into a depth that is lower than us because we were increasing the depth this entire time. And if we have a back edge to some node that we already visited, that node must have a depth that is less than or equal to us. Okay. So let's get rid of this. Let's keep going with our example here. So we ran into the zero. We're going to pass back the zero. We do the minimum of zero and three, pass back the zero. And here we still have to visit all the neighbors of two. So we visited this guy, but we didn't visit these, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, add one to our depth. So our depth here was two. So this is going to get a three. This, then we increase the depth again. So we'll get a four. And now we stop here, right? Because we have no neighbors. And now we're going to pass back ourselves so we're going to pass back four because we don't have any anything 
this, we're going to pass back the minimum depth that we can reach. So the minimum depth that I can reach is myself in this case. And we don't, oh, one thing to note is that we don't consider the guy that we just came from. So whatever node we just came from, which was this three, we don't consider it. So uh, we only consider any other neighbors if they were here, but not what we just came from. But anyway, we're going to pass back our depth here, which is four. And now because four is greater than three, that means that this is a critical edge because if we were just, this means that we were only increasing in this direction. Therefore, uh, we never backtrack or we never had a back edge to some depth that was smaller than us. Therefore, we're not in a cycle. So because four is greater than three, uh, this edge is a critical connection. Okay, and then we're gonna pass back the minimum of these two. So between three and four, three is smaller. So we pass back the three. Because three is greater than two here, because the minimum depth that we could reach is greater than our current our current depth, that means that this is also a critical connection. Now uh, we pass back the minimum depth that we can reach. So again, we pass back the minimum depth that we can reach. The minimum depth that we can reach here is zero. So we're going to pass back the zero to this one. Zero is less than one. Therefore, this is in a cycle. And we pass back the minimum, which is going to be zero again. And now because zero is less than or equal to zero, that means that this is also in a cycle. Because again, if uh, if it wasn't in a cycle, we would have in, we would have re, we would have received some depth that is greater than us because we were increasing our depth the entire time. We should have gotten a one, at least a one back from this. Um, but we got a, we basically got ourselves back, which just actually tells us that this is the root of the cycle. Okay. So anyway, um, but that's that's not important for this problem. But anyway, because it's less than or equal, this means that this is a uh, this edge is in a cycle. Okay, so now we're gonna go visit these neighbors. This would get a depth of one, right? Because we started zero and it's got the depth of one. Now this would get a depth of two and I'm just arbitrarily picking a path here. So I could have gone this way, it doesn't matter. But so we go one, then two, then three. And now I'm gonna see this one here from this node here. I'm gonna see that I've already visited this. I'm gonna take the minimum depth that you can reach, which is gonna be a one. And again, we don't consider the node that we just came from, right? When I was here, I don't consider the node that I came from. So that's why this depth stays at a one. So we have one, two, three. I see that I uh, gave this a depth already. I'm going to take the minimum depth that you can reach, which is yourself. And now, I'm, so I have a one here. I'm going to pass the minimum depth that I can reach, which is this one. I'm going to pass it back through the recursion. Then I'm going to pass back the minimum depth here, which would just be the one. And now because this one is, and also because these depths that I'm passing back are less than or equal to the depths in each node, that means that these edges are in cycles. So this edge is in a cycle, this edge is in a cycle, this edge is in a cycle, because these minimum depths that I can reach are less than or equal to my current, to my own depth. Okay. And again, because one is less than or equal to one, this edge is in a cycle, right? And then we're going to pass back this one to this zero. And because one is greater than zero, I'm sorry, because one is greater than zero here, because one is greater than my own depth, that means that this edge is a critical uh, connection. Okay. So that covers uh, the algorithm, and I wish I had to code it. So let's do that. Cool. Bye. All right, so let's code this out. So uh, they give us uh, the list of connections here, and because they, they actually tell us this is a connected graph right here in the constraints because um, the number of connections is e greater or equal to n minus one, which n is the number of nodes. So if there's n minus one edges, then that means it's a connected graph. So for example, let's say there was three nodes and there's two edges. Well, that must mean it's connected, right? Okay. So uh, what we're going to do is create an adjacency list. So let's just create a map of integers to a list of integers. So I'm just mapping the nodes to their neighbors. Uh, JCT list equals new hash map, and we're going to do our connections. Why is my spacing off? Okay, so for every um, connection in the connections, and these connections just represent edges, right? So we're just going to uh, insert the edges. So compute if absent, uh, pass in 
connection dot get zero. So it's just the first node in the edge. And if this key doesn't exist, so if this key doesn't exist, we're going to create an array list and insert it into the map. And if it does exist, it would just return the array list that we created in a previous iteration of the loop. So then we just add in um, the other node in the edge or the connection. So get one. And because this is undirected, we have to do because it's undirected, we have to do the the reverse of this. Um, so we're just going to uh, copy paste this and just flip it. So one maps to zero. Okay. So now, oh, so we have our agency list. Now we need to uh, let's create the thing that we're going to return, and we'll just call this CC for uh, critical connections. So equals new array list. And then that needs to be a semicolon and then return CC. And then we just need to do like a depth first search in between this, right? So oh, let's see, let's start with what, so what do we need in this depth first search? So we need our, we need the, we need to pass in the critical connection array list because we're going to add to it, right? That's how we're going to populate it. We need to keep track of the previous node that we just came from. We need to keep track of our, the current node that we're at in the DFS. We need to keep track of the depth of our current node. And we need to keep track of, you know, let's actually just type this out as I'm saying it. So let's call this find critical connections. And so we're going to pass in the previous node, which in the beginning is negative one to represent there is no previous node. And we're going to say, we're, let's just start from zero. So this is our current node that we're going to start the DFS from. And, and we could pick any node as long as it was less than n, but you know, why, why not just start at zero? And we're guaranteed to have at least two nodes in this graph. So I'm just passing in zero. So anyway, uh, the then we need to pass in our depth. So we're just going to start at a depth of zero. And then we need to pass in our adjacency list. We need to keep track of the minimum depth that every node can reach. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create uh, an integer array. So integer. And there's a reason I'm using the object version of integer and not a primitive version. So, and I'll, you'll see in a second, but because I actually want to make use of the nulls. Um, but integer array, uh, what do I want to call this? Min depth equals new integer pass in n. So n is the number of nodes. So every node has some minimum depth that they can reach. Okay. And so we're going to pass that in. And am I missing anything? Oh, pass in this critical connections that we're going to populate. And I think, I feel like I'm missing something, but if I am, I'll figure it out later. Okay, so I'll, let's just do private void. We actually have to write out our DFS now. So find critical connections. So we're going to pass in the previous, previous node that we just came from, pass in the current node, pass in uh, the depth, pass in, uh, oh, what? This should be over, wait. Oh, never mind. So pass in the adjacency list. So just copy paste this. Pass in. What am I missing? Min depth. Where is? Where are you? Pass in this guy. There's a lot of uh, arguments. Okay, and let's just put some new line, and then we're gonna pass in the critical connections. Okay. Method signature complete. All right. So now, what do we need to do? Let's Let's uh, populate our min depth. So in the beginning, we're going to say that the min depth that we can reach is ourselves or is our is our own current depth. So the min depth of this node is just equal to depth. So the min, what I'm just saying is the minimum depth that this node can reach is just its own depth. We're just going to initialize it to that in the beginning. And then we just need to loop through our neighbors. So let's say for every uh, neighbor, in the adjacent list dot get uh, node, then we want to say okay if the pre if the thing that I just came from so if previous equals neighbor, then just ignore it. We're just going to do nothing. Just continue. And if min depth of neighbor equals null. So this is why I wanted to initialize it to an integer object array and not um, just like the primitive ints. So if it's null, this means it's not visited. 
this is an unvisited node here. This neighbor is unvisited. And we just want to call DFS on it or our DFS method on it. So let's just pass in. Uh, so no, our current node is going to be the previous to this neighbor. So neighbor will be the current node in this DFS call. And then we're going to pass in depth plus one, pass in the adjacency list, pass in the depths, pass in CC. Okay. And now uh, we can say if uh, depth, wait, how do I want to do this? If the minimum depth of our neighbor, so this here, this min depth neighbor will get populated because we're DFSing on that neighbor first. So it'll get populated. Uh, it definitely get populated here, but there's another way it can get uh, changed, but you'll see in a second. So if the min depth of the neighbor, so if the minimum depth that this neighbor can reach is greater than my own depth, that means it's a critical connection. So we're going to do cc dot add and then just create a list out of the node and the neighbor because this edge here, the, the edge between node and neighbor uh, is a critical connection because it's not in a cycle. Because if it wasn't a cycle, this would be uh, less, min depth of neighbor would be less than or equal to depth. Okay. And last but not least, we want to assign min depth of ourselves to the minimum of uh, ourselves and our neighbor's min depth. So min depth neighbor. Okay, so all this is saying here is if my, if my neighbor could reach a certain minimum depth, well, then that means I can also reach that minimum depth, right? So I'm assigning my own minimum depth to whatever minimum depth my neighbor uh, could reach, assuming that it's uh, less than or equal to my own. Okay, so let's run this, make sure it works. And I missed a bracket somewhere, wait, line five. I always miss this bracket, okay, run code. Another one, because I copied and pasted, run code. Okay, submit. It's taking its time. All right, cool. So. Uh, it works and if the time complexity is just going to be o of e plus e because it's just a depth for search and um and the space will just be o of e plus e because again it's depth for search but anyway uh we are done um if you like the video you can give it a thumbs up and yeah you can subscribe if you want cool bye